Boy, can I help you? Listen up. I'm bringing you the best content to ever exist in the door-to-door industry from sales, leadership, recruiting, and personal development. Well, why would I need that? Because never before have we been able to collaborate with the top experts in their industries, sharing their secrets and techniques on what makes them the best. Wait, who, who are you? I'm your host, Sam Taggart, creator of the DDD Experts and DDD Con. Is there a place we can sit down? Well, come on in. Register today for D2D Con January 10th through 12th. Learn from over 40 amazing speakers, including the real wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort. Come as a team, learn as a team, leave as a tribe. All right, everybody. My name is Sam Taggart, your host of the Door to Door podcast. And I actually have a real treat, a Golden Door Award winner in the flesh. And you've got John Taylor. John Taylor I came through. Really no. <laughs> I know. I was like, wait a minute. The song just wanted to come on. Um, and he did a thousand accounts with Green X. So yep. awesome job. I just want to one like high five out Thank of you. just like yeah, respect. Thanks. You know what I mean? Like last year we were just jamming. There are three Golden Door Award winners this year. I know of four. So if you know another thousand account pest control guy, tag him. Yeah. I mean, that's four people out of how many pest guys do you think in the planet? In the planet, lots in America. Probably. Yeah, in America. <laughs> uh, probably, f- I mean, there's, with all the big companies, I mean, there's thousands. Of- thousands. I'm talking like, if you're listening to this, this is like Golden Door status, four out of, I don't want to say at least 8,000, at least. More than that. I don't even know. So anyway, thousands. but like thousands of people, we have one of the best of the best. So, I mean, this is this is a real honor just to have you on the show. So let's, Thanks for having me. Let's dive into this. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about... Your upbringing. This is interesting. I want to know. This is this this is the interesting question. You'll see why. I'm asking. Well, I have 10 brothers and sisters, right? 11 in the fam. I love this. Mormon. Well, excuse me. Oh, member, member of, of the, the Church, Church of Jesus, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, from Kaysville, Utah. I'm a Davis Dart. Um, you know, went to went on a mission to Tahiti. Served in uh, Bora Bora with my first area or whatever. And then came back, got recruited to go sell some some securities with the, the Hart twins, uh, good buddies from high school, went to Vivint, had a good experience, sold a couple summers um, with Vivint, and then went to a, did a couple pest control summers and ended up at Green X and had an awesome experience there because of the, the people there. And they were able to, with, with a bunch of guys, put me in a situation that I was able to, you know, have a good summer, you know, with, with the group of guys and the leadership there. So that's kind of how I'm now here in, today, here in your basement. Yeah, here in the here in the here in the lab, guys. Yeah. We just got done playing a game of golf. Beat him by five strokes. That's not right. a big deal. It's not that he's a bad golfer. Like Seventy to seventy-five on nine. No, <laughs> wasn't that bad. Forty and forty-five. That's still pretty good. Pretty good rounds of golf. Um, no, so let's. I want to talk. So when we were golfing, I thought it was interesting. You talked a little bit about this concept of like, man, I wish there was like a dinner where you yeah. could like all the best could like hang out. No, I thought about it this summer. I was like, man, it would be cool as I got closer to a thousand. It'd be cool to rub shoulders with you know the other some of the other top guys in the industry. And there's lots, not just in pest control, but also in alarms and satellite and all everything. So that being said, I was thinking about it, and then you invited me to the VIP dinner with you know the other Golden Door winners. So it's kind of cool to yeah. you know to be able to meet some of the other guys in the industry that. So I'm assuming you weren't at Door to Door Con last year, right? No, I wasn't. Okay, so you're going to be there this year, not only just there, but speaking. Right. So guys, if you're coming, learn from a guy that does a thousand accounts. I'd say that's a pretty cool like thing to do. I mean, a lot I'll of pests. I'll have some jokes. Yeah, he'll, he'll throw in some love, you know. He's he's going to share the secret in this podcast right now. So if you're listening, it's gonna we're going to dive into like... Big secret. The secret. People are like, what's your secret? Everyone, what's your pitch, what's the secret? man? I mean, you guys have all heard it if you've done a lot. Your guys are asking you, what's your secret? And they come out. Well, don't it, give so. it to them yet. Well, I, I mean, won't. Don't just spoil it. it. Yeah, we're just, we're just teasing. Golden to carrot. You come on. So, Door to Door Con, January 10th through the 12th, uh, VIP dinner. So, a lot of people, you know, they're buying their tickets right now. We've had a ton of sales this week. It's weird. I feel like a lot of people are like turning on the whole mindset of like, yeah. oh, I should probably pre- start prepping for January. So, yeah. uh, so DoorToDoorCon.com. But VIP dinner, what we've done is taken, there's 300 spots available. And literally there's uh, 200 of those already taken. So there's the Golden Door Award winners, 
all of the speakers. So we have over 50 speakers and it's, you get to rub shoulders with the guys that maybe didn't go sell a thousand, but in their prime they did, or now they're CEO. Now they're like top regional. Bigger fish. Yeah. You got Mendez, you got Leo Sageman, you got Josh Sutherland, you got uh, Jake Ellsworth, who's like a freaking beast in alarms. Pest control, you have Mitch Matthews, former NFL Golden Door player. You got uh, some, some big names. I mean, it's fun. Like you get to go and hang out with like the, 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 the elite of the elite. But those tickets are on sale. You can get them if you aren't one of the elite and you're not the invited for free. Uh, we're doing a casino night with a VIP dinner, hypnotist, and we'll do some other fun, cool stuff. So it'll be it'll be cool. I'm excited. Yeah, I look to forward it. to it. Yeah. So let's dive into this. You've got let's jam. I this is I guess let's jam into like what is the secret. So now if you're watching this, this is where you should probably start paying attention. The secret to selling. A thousand accounts. Drop it on us. Yeah, I mean, if you're in the industry, right, you've done well. All your guys are always asking you to come out. I mean, they see you in the correlation meetings and then they ask, you know, all right, well, here, I want to go out with them and see what they're doing. It's so funny when people come out with you and they look and, and they understand, wait a second, no, I mean, what are you really saying? I mean, you're in the correlation talking, right, but what are you really saying on the doors? And they find out that it's just the exact same thing. So I always talk, right? That the secret, right, that there is no secret, right? In this industry, in whatever industry you're in or whatever industry you will be in, there's no secret or shortcut to success. Um, it's those guys that are out and gals that are out um, just grinding, uh, out hustling, whether it's in sports. You think about Tiger Woods, LeBron James, Tom Brady. Um, I mean, the Mendez, you know, whatever it is, right, those guys are just out hustling, you know, I ran into a guy this summer that he was at the top of his field in the real estate. And, you know, he, he asked me, well, how do you do it? We were talking about all that, you know, we got into the whole conversation. He says, well, how do you do it? And I just the exact same way you did. And he was like, oh, you just, you're a grinder. I'm like, yeah, just grinding, you know, out there hustling. It's so funny because I watch, you know, I've interviewed 100 people now. Sure. And a lot of top people. And I kind of ask them the same thing. I'm like, what is it? Same thing. I grind. I say the same stuff. I yeah. grind. Yeah, I grind so much harder than everybody else. But I think people they'll like say to themselves, "Well, no, I work really hard, right? Like I go out there and I work really hard." And I think when we, you talk about grinding, it's not just going out there and knocking doors, right? It's being a hundred percent focused every step of the way and having a cr- a concrete why at the center of your mind all the time, right? Why are you out there? If it's just to make money, it's you're probably not going to be super motivated and you probably won't grind as hard, meaning every single door you're in it to get the sell. You're not just out knocking door looking for the lay downs, looking for low hanging fruit. My, my saying is don't knock to knock, knock to sell. Yeah. And a lot of people, right, don't when they're out there banging doors and, and my guys, right, will laugh. I'm always saying, you know, it's, you're going to be out there, right? A lot of people make the decision. They go out there for four months. You're going to be out there. I would rather sell a lot of accounts as opposed to not, right? And people are like, well, it's not. It, it really is just having that mindset of making up your mind. That's what you're going to go out and do. You're going to go out and grind every single day. And then not set your bar so low of looking past, right? I'm a two or three guy, a two or three day kind of And they of almost guy. like label themselves. Yeah. yeah. And every, you know, every summer you'll get into the office and you'll think, well, I'm probably better than this guy, but I'm not as good as this guy. So if that guy does 300, then you're going to do 250, right? And it's like, look, there's no limit. There's no there's no bar really for anything. I mean, next year there'll be, you know, eight guys that go out and do 1,200 accounts. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, just, I mean, it's the four-minute mile as soon as one person does it. And that's, for me at least, at GreenX, we had a couple guys that came from a company and they started doing, you know, 50 a week when they got there. And I was like, oh, I guess... And we were doing 40 a week before, 40, 45, and a big week was like 48, 49, right? And they started doing 50, 52, 53, then all of a sudden it was, oh. I, I guess, guess everybody, yeah. I guess that's like the new the big number, and then the next week, so that's what we were doing, whether it's in a week goal or a day goal or a month goal. I mean, every, I mean, 200 was impossible, and then somebody in our company, you know, Green X did it, and all of a sudden, oh, I guess, I guess you can go do 200 and then did it the rest of the summer, you know, so. That's crazy. So what do you what do you, what are your things that you do to stay focused? Yeah, a lot of people 
and I feel like a lot of people have had really good experience with like books or this or you know or that. My biggest thing is I talked about it. Simon Sinek's um, start with why, right? Of just why are you out there? You know, are you out there just to make money? Are you out there because you have to be? Because somebody, you know, kind of armbarred you out into the summer, or whatever. But having that concrete why drives a hundred percent focus on every single door. You know, I'm whether it's, you know, never doing less than four accounts, right? Like four is the minimum, never did it less than that all summer because that was what I had to do, right? Like that was my job. A lot of people don't look at like summer sales as like a job. They look at it as like an opportunity to go make lots of money. But at the end of the day, you're out there selling alarms or satellite or pest control. Your job is to go out and do X number of accounts. And if you don't do that, then that's your, then then you failed your job, right? So that's how I, I think I stay focused, right? Is just remembering my why, you know, we have a lot of great leadership, you know, where I work and they're always talking about that, whether, it's, you know, Bob Nelson coming from Cafe Rio talking about his why and then talking to us about that, you know, just why are you guys out there? What's driving you? And then putting that into play. So what did you do? Sorry, like I have a frog in my throat. <laughs> okay. I'm kind of sick, so apologize on this one. Talk more. So what did you do? You You had a guy come in and speak. And he talked about this kind of concept of like a lot of people, what kills you. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Tell me about that. Yeah. So at Green X, we do trainings. We also have executive lecture series just because of our owners, uh, Bob Nelson, Randy Rigby, just the connections they have. So one of the guys, Bob's good friend, Larry Gelwicks, right? Forever Strong. He came in and spoke and something that he talked about, it's kind of stuck with me. He said, don't let being good stop you from being great. And I think that's especially, I mean, everybody watching this uh, podcast, right? You, I mean, highly talented people. It's really easy for you, Sam, to be good in your life. Good and good at, you know, where you worked, right? Good in family, good in your church, uh, right? Just because you're super talented. But what Larry Gelwick talked about is don't let being good stop you from being great. Don't let being average, right? Don't be content with being average, right? So three, four, five hundred, you know, in pests is a really good, that's incredible, right? Like six, you know, that's like a really good summer. But I think a lot of guys can do a lot more than that in any industry. But they get, you know, I always talk about being hungry, right? It's it's 8.30 and you've done eight, you know, and or security yeah, whatever or four it is, day, yeah. right? whatever the number is. Big day. In pest control, you're at 8 and it's 8.30 and it's pretty much dark, right? Your car group guys have already sent you pins 30 minutes ago, right? And it's so easy to say, you know, great, right? Like, a right, awesome good day. Day. Yeah, yeah, hit it. Great day. But the great in in the alarms, right, in security or – sorry, in the, in the summer sales industry will knock every single night and try to get one more. And then all of a sudden, 8.45, you got one more and then – What about another one? And you're hungry for 10, where so many guys are so content with an eight day where it's like, look, be hungry for 10, be hungry for 12, right? Be hungry, hit, try to hit a 20 day, right? Just be so hungry for it. And you look at, I'm always talking to my guys, right, about, you know, Tiger Woods, LeBron James, right? These guys, I mean, take you take LeBron James. He's got a $39 million deal in perpetuity with, with Nike. How easy would it be for that guy to retire? Oh, easy. I mean, he's got, I mean, he's made, he's already one of the greatest, if not the greatest. Um, how easy would it be for that guy to retire, hang it up and, and move on, right? But he's so hungry for greatness that every year, day in, day out, he's grinding, right? Every off season, going back to it and putting in the work. And I think that's what makes him great. And that's what can make you great. Like I said, in this industry, but hopefully this isn't a landing pad for, you know, that's what we're always talking about, Green X, right? Not a landing pad, but a launching pad. Go get, come in, get some good skills, learn how to be great, and then go be great. If it is in this industry, great. But if it's in, you know, if you want to go be a doctor, be the best doctor. If you're going to be a lawyer, be the best lawyer, right? If you're going to go do into real estate, grind, find the, you know, be the best and be great in whatever, whatever you go into. I love that. Amen. Um, so... Work, work ethic as far as routine. What did you do on a daily? When did you start? When did you finish? Yeah, I think the gym, right? Every morning is super important. I mean, the book, um, Miracle Morning, mm -hmm. recommend it. It talks about, right, having your Miracle Morning, having just a routine. And I'm super 
superstitious. I, I feel like most summer so Dude, it's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird. I had to wear a baseball cap, or I had the, to wear a hat. The, the Nikes. Yeah, like it's, it's certain yeah, I have to have Dr. Pepper lunch. Really? That's a shout out to Dr. Pepper. Recommend it. <laughs> Sponsored by. <laughs> Sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Great commercial. No, but like, so it gets getting into a routine, getting a habit of, you know, you go to the gym, right? Spend time with your wife, have breakfast, whatever you do, right? And then hit the doors and then have a routine. If you eat out, eat out. Don't, you know, and if you, whatever, you have lunch or whatever at home, do it every day and don't change it and hit the doors. Don't hit the doors at 2.33, 3.30, right? Get on the doors at one one thirty if you're selling pest or alarm schedule, right? And if you're... What are you doing if you're doing pest? So I, that, we run the alarm schedule. Oh, at cool. 11 o'clock meeting and then one one thirty doors sprint as opposed to like a typical pest control nine, which I ran the last month. So I did it. I did four months and then a month and in September 28th. The last month I did nine to nines, nine to nines, which is great, you know. And but it was a month. It wasn't. It wasn't well, four no. Months. What's crazy? No, what's crazy is like I I talked to a lot of industries and I remember there was an industry. I'm not gonna say which. They're like, no, you would, you would die. <laughs> I go, sure. Wait, wait. You're saying I would die if I knocked nine a.m. to nine p.m. They're like, no. Like, I don't think that'd be possible. And I'm like, you guys, go do it, you know, every day. I'm like, people do that every day. Like, what do you mean you wouldn't do that? No, man, like, how, I can only, I, dude, three, four hours and I'm done. I'm like, oh, okay. That's how you're going to be, like, bad it. <laughs> yeah. Like, good luck. Which is funny. I mean, you think about whether it's a thousand pest control accounts or 400 alarms or whatever it is, right? I think you hear those numbers and you think, oh, that, I mean, it's just such a big number that you forget that it was day in, day out. Every day. I think a lot of people, I mean, you did 400 plus. I think a lot of people thought or forget that every single day you went out, you were at zero. Every Amen. Every single day you went out, you were at zero. And when you knock a door, that person that answered doesn't know if you're at 957 busting for a thousand. They don't know if you're at 20. And yeah. it's July, right? And you're the crappiest rep or the best they have, rep. They have no idea. They don't know you. But day in, day out, you know, I averaged, I did 1,128 days, which means I did 7.9, right? Day in, day out. Day in, day out, starting at zero and hitting your number, whatever it is, right? But just day in, day out, you're at zero. Every single Monday, you're at zero. And every single week, you got to get up to 50 or whatever your number is, right? But I think so many people forget that it's not it's not given to anyone, right? Anybody in any job, right? Any industry, they, I mean, you're, you're at z- in, especially in this industry, right? You're at zero every single day. And 100%. every single day, you got to go out and, and make it happen. I love that. So let's shift gears. You're moving into like a VP of sales, trainer, role. Have you found, how do you transfer your, God gifted ability, the secret. Right. How do you how do you transfer this gift that you have into others? What what are some hacks on training? I think with training guys, I think the biggest things and you've said it a million times, right, when you trained is it's not as much and you gotta say the right things, but there's so many right things to say. My biggest thing in training is it's not so much about what you say, right? It's so much more about how you say it. And so you talk about sales principles as, a, as opposed to getting away from the scripts. Assumptiveness, again, just being the man. You know, when people ask you, yeah, man, you're like, and we've all heard it, right? You're really good. Yeah, I'm the best, right? Like, and just be that way. It doesn't mean you have to be a jack. It doesn't mean you have to be super arrogant. But the best soccer, I put soccer, the best soccer players are the ones who think they're the best, right? You step onto any given field, you think you're the best player on the field. Same with the doors, right? It's every single day going out and just knowing you're the man and being the man, right? As opposed to going out and hoping for, shoot, I hope I get a couple a couple deals today, you know? But it's every single day. I know I'm going to go get at least four or five and six, seven, you know? And just being the man. And, and then with that and training people, right? It's just trying to get that confidence. And people will say, well, how? If you've never gone out and, and done it, right? You mean fake it till you make it, right? I mean, I'm sure you've taught the same thing. Amen. Everybody, I mean, it's so funny. Like, that's a common term I hear amongst these top reps is it's like, I had to fake it till I made it. Yeah, of course. It's like I walk out there and it's like, I'm new. But I'm not going to tell you that. I'm, just, I'm the best. Like, yeah, yeah. Of course you want to buy from me. I'm like, yeah. I'm like the top dude. Like, I'll be the number one rookie in the, in the whole yeah. industry. And it's like, why not? Why not? And buy from me because you like buying from good people. Well, and so many, you know, 
you knock behind so many people, it's like, well, what was the difference? And timing's timing, right? But you look at the guys that are selling, you know, 400 alarms, it's, they are selling the people that you're not, right? They're the ones going out and they're making it happen because they believe they're going to make it happen. As a, It's just, this whole industry, it's just, it's just been so funny to see that it's just such a mindset thing where it's like everybody puts themselves in a box, everybody puts limits on what they can do and it's like, you know, why? Why? Yeah. It's like, who who said that? Yeah. Somebody like somehow posed that on you. And it's like, you two a day is it. really good. And it's like, yeah. It's like, but what if we told you two a day sucked and five a day was like average? You'd probably go out and do five a day. You would. A hundred percent. You would. And it's a principle I talk about a ton. And I think like a lot of people are like, oh yeah, yeah you say that. But I'm like, no, what if you embody that? What if you chose to be like, F that. I'm five a day guy. Yeah. Like, that's normal. Like, I would be pissed if I didn't do five. And that was what you told yourself every day. You gotta do it. You know? Yeah. It's just like, it's so funny, but it's like, the mind is so powerful. Yeah. No, totally. I mean, I don't know if anybody's watched this. It's saw the Craig Manning podcast. I haven't launched it on the iTunes yet, but he's also speaking at DDCon. He's like a of course. mental performance coach. Do you know who he is? Uh, no. So he trains LeBron James. Okay. So he's speaking and he's like, well... And it's just the mind of how powerful it is. And he talks about, like, talk about things you want to have happen, not what you don't want to have happen. Sure. And he's just like, I'm going to sell this person instead of, like, I hope I don't, you know, I hope they don't reject me or, you know what I mean? You're, well, it's it's the day-to-day. It's also the, I mean, we've all heard the goal boards, right? But, I mean, make, if you, if you don't have a goal board, make a goal board. Yeah. You know, whether I, it's a, whether Put one it's, in your room. Yeah, the put poster. one in your room. In, if you're out there in the summer, you want to hit 1,000, you want to hit 600, whatever it is. Put it up there and check it off until you hit it. And if in five years you want to have a home, put it as your, you know, computer. My, my wife and I, we have on our, you know, laptop our, our five-year goal boards, right? And every single day we're looking at it and it will it will be because we think about it, right? Yeah. Thinking it will be. If you don't think about it, it's not going to be, you know, so. I love it. Um, so kind of wrapping up. So a couple more questions. One what advice would you give somebody that's just getting into the industry? If you had to tell like brand new rep, just signed, and what would you tell them? Yeah, I, I'm of the opinion um, that everybody should try or do summer sales because you can't try summer sales. If you try summer sales, you'll be gone in the world, yeah. right? But I'm of the opinion that everybody should give it a shot for a summer. Um, and then with that, right, summer sales, I it's not the end all be all. Right, there's a lot of different industries. There's a lot of big fish in summer sales. It's relatively a small pond, right? But go out, do it, give it your all, dive head first, and then you know you'll have that experience, and you'll either you're gonna have the experience, you're gonna say, man, that was great. I never want to do it again, right? But you had the experience. Or two, mm-hmm. I had you know an awesome experience. I'm gonna do it for two or three, four years during school, and shoot, maybe it'll turn into a career, maybe it won't, but. I think if you're just getting into the industry, there's there's so many, and that's you know why I'm at Green X is there's so many different companies out there. Whether it's you know Green X or whoever, and there's good guys everywhere. Surround yourself with good guys because that's yeah. what it's all about. Hundred percent. I mean, any anybody can pay what anybody can pay. Um, you know, we have the opportunity to have some really cool owners at Green X, but besides, I mean. At, at the end of the day, what makes the difference is who's your manager, who you're going out with in the apartments, because that's that's what's going to make your summer. It's not going to be, you know, there you go. Uh oh, I'm getting a call from Thailand. Pause. Jeez. Resume right there. There you go. Uh-oh. So if you go back, hit resume. Hold on, people. We got to turn this on silent anyway. Okay. Um, we we're back live. Um, so anyways, I was talking about, it's the people, right? It's all about your manager. It's because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good the training platform is, how good is your manager? He's the one training you every single day in correlation. Um, who are you, who are you going out with the apartments? Are they good guys? You know, is it a bunch of good dudes? Is it kind of, you know, go out with guys, you know, and trust and, and yeah, make the most of it. Cool. What about year round or like off season, right? A lot of people do the summer program. What advice would you give? leaders or even reps yeah through these next six months yeah there's there's the there's the right way to do summer cells and there's the wrong way to do summer cells and if you're watching this 
hopefully you're doing it the right way. If you're not, do it the right way. The right way is start now. Start recruiting. Don't wait until all your buddies are already signed with other companies. Don't wait until everybody just gets more and more expensive. Start training. Start going out and knocking. Start reading the manual. Start doing the wrong way to do it is hope for an internship that falls through and then April, you know, you're signing on and you know, so that's what I'd say in terms of advice of right now. Jump head first. Don't be a ashamed of doing summer sells. Like there, you know what I'm saying, right? Like I knock doors, baby. Knock doors for you know, you sell bug spray for a living and be proud of it, right? Like and and you know, and no matter what you do in your right, like be decisive. Yeah, I'm gonna do summer sales this summer and I'm gonna go make the most of it. And it, am I gonna do it for eight years? I don't know. But, but at I'm least gonna, I'm committed. I'm committed. Commit. And, and I would say commit to a company. Yeah. I guys, think it's so oh. easy through these next six months to just get persuaded in so jerked many around. different ways and jerked around and it's like just head down. Most successful guys in the industry that found a good group of guys, right? And I'd say, you know, I've I've found a good group of guys with at Green X. And they find a good group of guys and they stick there. And they don't jump year to year, month Because it's easy to always chase a shinier object. The job's hard. Everything looks shiny. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course. But it's like... But, it's... but find a good group of guys and build with that group of guys. And I have friends at a lot of different companies. And every year we check up on each other. And we're not recruiting each other. But it's... You know, we were... You were in this industry, there's no loyalty. Which is just, it just, you know, it just makes you sad. sick. Yeah, it's sad, right? But there's Sales blacklist. Plug. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so much value in being loyal, right? And maybe it'll cost you 2 or 3% if you don't go shop around. At the end of the day, everybody, you know, Bob Nielsen, our CEO and chairman, he's always saying that everybody has a book on them and everybody knows your book. You're not kidding anyone, right? And everyone knows if you're loyal or not. Everybody knows if you're just a money chaser or not. Everybody knows if you're honest or not. You're not kidding anybody. Everybody will know. So find a group of guys, be loyal to that group, and and go out and make it happen. Love it. So any – oh, one last question, and then two last questions. Um, what are you most excited about DoorDoorCon this year? Dinner. Dinner. <laughs> It'll be good. No, I mean it's – Like why know, should people go? Whether it's, you know, you always want to go lift with people that are stronger than you. I always, and no matter what job, I I always want to go out and be around more successful, smarter people than I am, right? Which isn't too hard for me. But in Door to Door Con, you go and you get to rub shoulders with the best guys in the industry and some of the best speakers, you know, in the in the nation, right? And it's just such a cool, such a cool opportunity to go and you know this like i said jump head first this is your industry for this summer go out yeah it's like it's so funny it's like if there there couldn't be a more specific thing to help you sure train recruit sell lead business development i mean it's like design yeah what's cool about door to door con right is it's it's that it's just a bunch of studs in the industry that have done it have had success in it you know we can all always learn and every Every summer you can learn, every door, right? Like in September, I got off a door and was just like, like I, it could have done, you know, you can always learn. Yeah. And, and, you know, door to door con is a great place to go learn. Cool. Love it. Well, love it. Um, any last tips, advice, things you want to shout out? I you had two questions. Oh yeah. The last one is, I always ask this, I forgot. If you could give the, I'm going to focus just to pest control guys. Cool. So I'm a aspiring Golden Door winner in the pest control space. What would you tell me? Yeah, I would say don't set a bar for yourself. Right? Don't look at. I mean, look. I told my guys right out this summer. It was look. I mean, we had we had the top rookie. We had a bunch of guys do over two fifty, and it was look. Am I? And at the end of the summer, I was at eight hundred. Right, two hundred a month. And it was look. Am I? Am I really? 600 or 500 accounts smarter than you am i really five or 600 accounts better looking no i'm not i'm not smarter well, i would say no that. definitely <laughs> not definitely not better looking right and it's just like look i don't have anything that any of you don't have and i and i'm not just saying like 
the guys that are ripping their their studs, but you look at them, you're like, look, what do you? I mean, you we look right when it's like that guy did a thousand. Like, you don't have nobody. We don't have anything that you don't have. So I wouldn't go out and get to your office and put yourself in the 150 level club or put yourself in, right? It's like, look, go out and put yourself in what club you choose. Like, yeah, just go. If you look good, I'd, I would rather do 10 a day. I would rather do eight a day. Yeah. No, Is it a day more fun to do 10? Well, it's way more fun. You wait, you make way more money. Yeah. But it's like people laugh and you're like, but it's that easy. Yeah. It's so like, stupid. I'd it's like, like look. I would rather go out and do 50 in a week than 20. I, that, I personally, I would rather do it. So if you're going out, Choose what you're going to do and then go do it and be accountable to it. And like I said, go make it happen. I love it. Okay. Well, much love. Appreciate you guys, your time and just the opportunity to get to know you in golf. And hopefully we can go hit the club again. Yeah, and yeah it was really fun. Thanks, man. Thanks, Sam.